Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank God for blessing us one more day to assemble here together at Soundward Worship for uplifting of his name. This time we'd like to go before the Lord in prayer, and we ask that those of you who are willing and able, if you would stand and seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for blessing us even to see another day. Yes, God. We thank you, hallelujah, even for salvation, for health, and for strength. Thank you, Jesus. And God, we thank you for your presence in this place. Let your spirit continue to have its right of way. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for keeping us even during these perilous times, yes, Lord. God. These times that the pestilence, Lord, seems to run rampant in the land. But hallelujah, we are in thee, O Lord, and no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. Thank you, Jesus. And God, we ask that you would continue to anoint, to bless your word, the servant, Lord, of your word. Yes, bless, Lord, each and every hearer and Thank doer you, of your word. Jesus. For we continue to walk this walk, hallelujah, this walk of faith in thy holy name. We thank you for the anointing, Lord. Let your free will spirit have its right of way. And Lord, we pray that some soul will say yes to your will in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord, that we will not leave the same as when we came, but renewed, refreshed, restored, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Have our glory to God. Let your spirit have its right of way. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Glory. Yes, Lord. Help us, Lord, to endure our making. Lord, for we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, these and all blessings we pray. Let everyone say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning. Hallelujah. He woke us up in our right mind. Hallelujah. He gave us the use and activity of our limbs. Hallelujah. He's caused breath to be in our body. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. And we're so thankful for all that he has done for us. Hallelujah. Has God been good to you? Hallelujah. Has God been good to you? Hallelujah. What do you have to be thankful for on today? Hallelujah. When we reflect back on when 2020 started, I'm sure... Uh, we all had plans. I'm sure we all had dreams. I'm sure we all had hopes. I'm sure we all had thoughts about how 2020 was going to go. I'm sure that we all had some type of plan in place or some type of goal that we were looking for in 2020. And then started to hear murmurs in January, started to hear murmurs in February. And in March, a pandemic hit globally. And that wrecked our plans. That wrecked our lives. But did it change the fact that God is good? Did it change the fact that God is faithful? Amen. Did it change the fact that God is a keeper, that God is a protector, that God is a provider? Hallelujah. So if that remains constant, hallelujah, then we owe God a praise. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the glory and the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Regardless of what we've seen since 2020 rolled in, God is good. Hallelujah. God is worthy. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is holy. Hallelujah. And we worship him on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ask that you join me. Hallelujah. As we worship God. Praise God. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, With the heart of thanksgiving, I 
I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands, with my hands lifted up. Hallelujah. And my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Thanksgiving with the heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless you, Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless you, Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee. I will bless thee, O Lord. With my hands, with my hands lifted up. And my heart filled with praise. And my, my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless you, Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I'll bless you, Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Hallelujah. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee. I will bless thee. Righteous, mighty name, hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is Put your good. hands together and give oh, thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, he's worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto oh, the Lord. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto oh, the Lord. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he Put is good. Put your hands together and give oh, thanks. thanks. Unto the Lord, for he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. Oh, he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is good. being here today. Thank you, Jesus. I thank the Lord for his mighty works in our lives. I thank the Lord for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I thank God again for being here. And I thank God for his loving kindness and his tender mercy. Thank you, Jesus. God is an awesome God. Yes, he is. And I just thank God Praise for Praise him you. being in our lives. Yeah. God is an awesome God. He thank is a you, faithful Jesus. God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's love en endures forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of God, praise the Lord, for you, the Lord is good. Hallelujah. We should sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for a peculiar treasure. Thank you, Jesus. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for being here again you, this morning. Jesus. And I, I, I have you know, some things on my mind, and I just want you to just pray with me as well as pray for me today because God has given my wife and me and my family a goal and given us a task, and we need to perform that task. And so we're praying and believing God that we're going to move forward in the will of God and do all that God would have us to do, and we're not going to be slack concerning what we need to do, because we know God is not going to be slack concerning his promises. Amen. 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 So let us pray. Lord God, we thank you and thank bless your name. Jesus. Magnify you, Lord God. Lord God. Because you are the Lord of Lords yes, and the King God. of Kings. You, God, you reign supreme. Hallelujah. God, you are Lord of all Lords. Thank and you Jesus. are Lord of everything. Thank God, you, you own everything. Yes, God. You, Lord God, created all, Lord God. Yes, and God. we, as your creatures... Your creation worship you. Yes, God. We worship Hallelujah. you, Lord God, in the beauty of your holiness. Hallelujah. And God, we thank you and praise you today, Lord God, because we want your anointing to reign. Yes, God. We don't want it to be the people that are seen. Thank we want it to be Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And as we lift Jesus up, Hallelujah. everybody's going to be drawn to yes, you. Lord. And God, today, let your word go forth. Let it be planted in the hearts of man Thank you, Jesus. and let your word grow, spring forth, Lord God, and produce fruit in each and every one of our lives. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, I thank God for his presence. I thank God for being here today. I thank God for my wife and my sister-in-law opening up service today. I thank them and I thank my parents and and my godparents for being with us in our home so we could just worship together it's good when we come together and i thank god that we are in the safety of his arms yes. i know Jesus. we have things that we're supposed to be doing we're supposed to be wearing masks and we're supposed to be uh paying attention to the laws of the land the laws of the land said that we're not supposed to be any more if I'm not mistaken, then 10 people. And if we gather, we should be practicing safe distancing. And I thank God that we are doing that. We are still practicing safe distancing. Um, we are not gathering in our home more than 10 people, but to God be the glory. And I say that because there is something that I want everybody to understand. When the laws of the land do not contradict the Bible and the word of God, it is okay to do. If the law of the land say pay your taxes, that does not contradict the Bible. It is okay to do. If the law of the land say drive the speed limit, the law of the land says drive the speed limit. It is not contrary to the word of God to drive the speed limit. It is okay to do. But when the law of the land starts to contradict the word of God, then there is a right we have because we are saved to be in civil disobedience. Now, I don't want to scare anybody. I don't want you to think that I'm being obstinate and I want to preach against the law of the land. But I do know that God has called us to do something. Mm -hmm. And I do know God is not fearful of anything man can do because God created man. Mm -hmm. And if the law of God says we are to be in movement and we are to be doing what God called us to do, morally and ethically, we have a right to be obedient to the word of God. And that doesn't mean that we're standing against the law of the land. Right. That means we're standing for the word of God. I don't know who I'm preaching this to, but I need the world to understand 
that even in your homes and even in a place where we need to be secluded and be, be using wisdom in this time, there's still something God has for us to do. That's right. There's still a life we need to live. There's still a morality we need to uphold. There's still the word of God we need to hold to. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, then you need to pray and ask God to help you do that. That's right. That's right. Don't let the world dictate your life with Christ. The world is not here to dictate how we move and how we live in Jesus. How we move and live on this earth, that can be dictated by what the world says. But our life in Christ is monitored and dictated and moved by Jesus. In Jesus Christ, in God, we have our life, strength, our health, and the movement you, of our Jesus. faculties. Yes, it is God. in Christ that we move. Thank it is not because of what's on the land. It is not because of what's in the land. You, we move in Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank God for the word that he's Jesus. given and he's sharing with me. Like I said, I had a lot on my mind. And I want you to understand that it is okay to be obedient to Jesus. Glory. It is okay to be obedient to the word of God. It is okay and it is right to be obedient to God. Now, I'm not telling you, and I'm not standing in the pulpit saying to you, be disobedient to civil law. That's not what I'm telling you. What I am saying, if you don't hear from God, please don't let the world's voice be the only voice you listen to. That's right. That's right. The world's voice cannot be the only voice you listen to. You have to hear the voice of God. And in all this commotion that's going on, and in all this turmoil, and in all this pestilence and disasters going on, God is still saying, I'm not in the wind, I'm not in the storm, I'm not in the shaking and the earthquake, I am still in a still small voice. And we have to quiet all those things around us so we can hear the voice of God. Thank the Lord for, for that. I, I, I felt the Lord just leading me to say those things because I, I, I refuse to move in fear. I refuse to move in fear. There's one thing to understand when fear is around you. There's one thing to understand when we get scared. I get scared. There are times when I get scared. But I can't let the feeling of fear stopped me from doing what God called me amen, to do. Amen. If that were the case, none of the apostles would have moved like God wanted them to move. Even Peter, who denied Christ because he was scared. He didn't want to go through what Christ go, went through. But the Holy Ghost has come upon us so that we can preach the gospel. Amen that we can carry this word to the ends of the world. And we got to be about our business in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? The word for today is not what I just gave you, but it is. I want you to understand something. God speaks and we need to hear. If you would go to me, go with me to just 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we're going to read chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. And then we're going to go to Luke, chapter 15, 8 through 10. The first passage we're going to read in the Bible would be 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. The reading goes as such. This is the King James Version. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul is speaking to Timothy. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, thank you, Jesus, but of power, say power, power. and of love, say love. love, and of a sound mind, say sound mind. sound mind. God has given us power, love, mm -hmm. and a sound mind. But what I want you to understand is verse 6. 
Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. You have to know that God has not forgotten us. But this verse goes a little bit deeper than God forgetting us. It goes to what God put in us, God has not forgotten about. And so Paul is telling Timothy, I want you to remember what's in you. Don't forget what's in you. And sometimes you have to stir up what's in you. Thank you Jesus. If we could go to Luke 15, we're going to read... Luke chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. And this may be a familiar passage. This passage is talking about the parable of the lost coin. The parable of the lost coin. The reading goes as such from the King James Version. Either what woman, either what woman, having ten pieces of silver. If she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek dil diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Verse 8, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep. Somebody say sweep. Sweep. The house and seek diligently <laughs> till she find it. The title of the message today is don't be annoyed by the dust. Put some water on it. Don't be annoyed by the dust. Put some water on it. I was reading a story not too long ago about how back in the day they didn't have carpet on the floor. They didn't have towel on the floor. Some places didn't have wood on the floor. It was a dirt floor. Now, I'm not that old to I remember what a dirt floor was. I didn't live in a house with a dirt floor. A lot of people that are listening to me today don't know what a dirt floor is. But we do know what it's like to be on the dirt. We do know what it's like to be around dirt and dust. And I can imagine trying to sweep a dirt floor. I have seen movies where they take branches and leaves and they try to sweep dirt around in their homes and they clean their houses. I've seen those things and I've noticed and I was reading how they would sweep and it would push up dust and the dust would get around the room and it would get in your eyes and it would be an irritant. It would get in your lungs and it would be an irritant. But I tell you right now, don't be annoyed by the dust. Put some water on it. And what they would do is they would sprinkle water around the room. And what this water would do, it would keep down the dust. It would push down the dust. It wouldn't get all those particles in the air. I want you to imagine with me, if you will, this woman who lost a coin, sweeping her house trying to find this coin. This coin that belonged to her. I have three points that I want you to understand today. One point is, you're lost but not forgotten. Lost but not forgotten. Second point is, lost but still claimed. Lost but still claimed. Third point would be lost but you still got value. Lost but you still got value. I don't know who this word is for today, but I hope you hear that God is searching for you. Thank you Jesus. And we need to understand like that woman that lost her coin. In those days, the understanding is that the woman was married. And when they got married, they were giving a headdress. And the headdress had coins in it. 
And so the understanding is that one of the coins had fallen out of the gift of the headdress. And so it was precious to her. She searched for that coin. I want you to understand something that when we look for something, don't you find yourself understanding that, hey, friends are coming, but I got to find this. I'm late for work, but I got to locate what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Somebody's calling on the phone. They just got to wait because I got to find what's on my heart. Mm -hmm. Imagine this woman is looking for a coin despite tasks that she may have to do. She is saying, I got to put them aside because there's a coin missing. Now, if we read the whole chapter of Luke, it talks about parables, one, of the lost sheep. This is the second parable that talks about the lost coin. The third parable in this chapter talks about the lost son. The first point says, lost but not forgotten. Lost but not forgotten. And we have to understand that we were lost, those who are in Christ now. But God never forgot about us. God never forgot about us. We may feel like we are lost, but God never forgot about us. We may feel like, God, what is going on in the world today? But God says, I have not forgotten That's about right. you. Thank you Jesus. We may feel like, God, my bank account says you forgot about me. But God says, no, I still own a cattle on a thousand hills. Mm -hmm. God says, you may think that, hey, my health might be failing me. But God says, no, I am still a healer. By my stripes, you are healed. You may think, God, I feel alone. I am left alone. God says, no, you have a comforter that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We are not forgotten by God. We need to understand that are not sparrows sold for two farthings and not one of them is forgotten by God. But even this very, the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. God gave me that verse when I was thinking about being forgotten by God. And in that verse, it talks about how sparrows, you can actually buy five sparrows for two pennies. Five sparrows for two pennies. How insignificant a sparrow might have been. But God says, you're not insignificant. You're worth more. And if I remember a sparrow, Amen. how much more do you think I'll remember you? Mm -hmm. I want the world to understand God has not forgotten us. We may feel displaced, but we are not forgotten. Thank you, Jesus. We need to take the position, not like the coin. I want you to deal, bear with me a little while. We're not the coin. Don't take the position of the coin. The coin doesn't know it's lost. The coin doesn't know it's in the dust. The coin doesn't know it might be under a chair. The coin doesn't know it might be behind the desk. The coin does not know. Before salvation, we weren't even looking to be found by Christ. Before salvation... We didn't even know that we were lost. We didn't even know what position we were in. But it took God seeking us mm -hmm. and allowing us to understand that we're displaced but not forgotten. Hallelujah. And God says, I have not forgotten you. you yes, yes. The second point I want you to bring out is loss but still claimed. Loss, but still claimed. You have to understand that even though the coin was not in her possession, she did not give the coin to somebody else. Understand, the coin might have been out of her possession, 
but she still had the right to possess it. Hear me, I'm going to say that one more time because I want you to understand. The coin was not in her hand. It was still in the house. The coin, she didn't know where it was, but it still belonged to her. Mm -hmm. If Jesus were walking in the garden after man had sinned, Jesus knew exactly where Adam was. But what was the question Jesus asked? Adam, where are you? Mm -hmm. Why did Jesus ask that? Because Jesus, God knew exactly where Adam was. Mm -hmm. The question wasn't for God. The question was for Adam. Mm -hmm. The question is that do we know where we are in Jesus? Do we know who we belong to in Jesus? Do we know who possesses us? Do we know who owns us? Do we know who we follow? Do we know who we belong to? Do we know who our God is? Do we know whose hand will never be separated from? Do we know these things? The woman knew that's my coin. It don't belong to nobody else. And we need to get the understanding that Jesus is saying, these are my people. God gave me these people. They belong to me and they belong to no one else. And God is saying, I don't care what happens. I don't care what the matter is going on. God says, you belong to me. And there is nothing that's going to take you out of my possession. You might be dispossessed, meaning you might be misplaced. You might feel out of whack. You might feel like you're out of source. You might feel like nothing's going my way, but God says, I have always claimed you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And we need to understand God claims you, you as his own. Yes, and when we understand who we are claimed by, I don't care if you are under a chair. I don't care if the pressures of life are pressing down on you. Don't be annoyed by the dust. Thank you, Jesus. Put the spirit on it. Thank you, Put some water on it. And I guarantee you the dust will settle. Hallelujah. And when God settles the dust, his light will be turned on and he will find you. you and when God finds you, you're going to be put right back in position. You're going to be put right back where you belong. Lost, but God still claims you. You still belong to God. We need to recognize that God has not forgotten us. God has not disowned us. We are still gods, even in pestilence, even in times of distress. God still says, you are mine. Yes, yes. I dare someone to come to me and say that any of my children or my wife belong to somebody else. I dare them. I dare them. One, my sons and my wife will tell them, I'm not yours. I belong to Derek Fant. I am joined with him, not only because we have relationship, but we're joined by blood. Hallelujah. And it's the blood that joins them to me. It doesn't matter where they go. It doesn't matter if I see them or not. It doesn't matter if they're in my presence. I know I'm joined Thank you, Jesus. by the blood. And sometimes we can't see those we fellowship with. We don't know where they are. They have been out of our presence for a long time, but I'm here to tell you, God says you're joined by the blood. And this blood that God has in us, God is saying, that's how I claimed you. You belong to me because you have my blood and whom also have obtained 
and inheritance being predestined according to the purpose. This purpose that God has ordained. We are joined by the blood. Luke 12, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 11 through 14 from the Message Bible talks about how we are claimed by God. It's in Christ that we find out we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up and had his eyes on us, he, be, be, he designs on us for glorious living. Long before we even thought about who God was, he already had a design for us in mind. Part of the overall purpose, he is working out everything and everyone. We have to understand God is working out everything and everyone. Nothing goes unnoticed in the house of God. Amen. The woman knew, hey, I got to find this coin. She knew it was in the house. She knew she didn't lose it in the street. She knew she didn't drop it in the lake. It was in the house. So she searched where she knew it belonged. It is Christ that you once you heard the truth and believed it. You believe the message of your salvation. Found yourselves home free. And this is what I love about the Message Bible. It says you were signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Ghost. In the world, don't let the dust annoy you. Put some water on it. The Holy Ghost has signed you, sealed you, and delivered you to God. God has never disowned you. He still claims you as one of his own. This sign from God is the first installment of what's coming. It's a reminder that we'll get everything God has planned and promised to us. And it will lead to a glorious life in Christ. God's plan is still working out. God's plans are still being fulfilled. And God has never not claimed you. You need to know that you are signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Ghost. My last point, and I'm closing. There are those that are lost and feel like you're lost. There are those that are lost and feel like no one wants me. There are those in the world that feel like I've been cast aside. There are those in the world that say, does anybody know what's going on in my life? There are those that say, is there anyone out there thinking about me? Are there those in the world that say, is anybody paying attention to what's going on with me? I have the answer for you. And his name is Jesus. And Jesus is saying, I know what's going on. Amen. Amen. Jesus is saying, you might feel lonely, but you're not alone. Amen. Jesus is saying, I know exactly what's going on with you. Jesus is saying, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. I'm right here. The coin couldn't move to where the lady was. The lady that lost the coin looked for the coin. The coin didn't look for the lady. The coin could not move to the lady. But I want you to understand something. Picture with me, if you will. Have you ever began to sweep or vacuum and there was a dust ball that you tried to get up? And every time you move the broom, every time the broom swept, and I have a broom here. If you notice, this broom has been used. Thank the Lord. We know how to use brooms in this house. But every time you went to sweep with the broom, it seemed like I went to sweep for the dust and the dust would move. 
You ever notice that? If you had a vacuum cleaner and there was a dust ball and you went to go get the dust ball, but something blew the dust ball away. And when I began to sweep and I'm sweeping and it seems like every time I sweep, something goes in the opposite direction of where I'm sweeping. Sometimes our lives are like that. And God is trying to get you. No, come over, come over here. I'm, try, I'm trying to get you over here. But the world pushes us in another direction. Winds blow us in a different direction. And God is saying, don't worry. I'm going to keep looking till I get you back home. I'm going to keep looking till I put you back where you belong. I'm going to keep sweeping and turning the light on until you're back where you belong. I want you to understand that you are valued in Christ. These parables that I were talking about in Luke, if you notice, they increased in value. Not that a sheep ever was valued with a person. That's not what we're talking about. But I want you to look at the numbers. In the beginning part of Luke, it talked about one sheep out of a hundred. The shepherd would stop being with the 99 to go search for that one sheep. Mm -hmm. Then it went one coin out of 10. You see how the value is increasing? And God is saying your value is increasing. You'll never lose value with me. And the final parable that we're talking about that we've referenced is the one son out of two. From one out of a hundred, from one out of ten, to one out of two. I admonish you to read Luke chapter 15, the whole chapter. It will, It is full of nuggets and wisdom and things that we can learn about the value that God places on us. There is what I have learned and come to, to understand, something that motivates God toward us. There is what one might call intrinsic value. And the other term is extrinsic. There is intrinsic value, which is an internal desire to do something for its own sake. And God has placed in us intrinsic value. Your ethics, your morals, those are placed in us. Those are intrinsic values. Something in me is causing me to do a thing. Then there's relative value. Relative value, its motivation is external. There is something externally pushing me to do something in the hopes that it's going to give me a reward, in the hopes that it's going to keep me from a negative position and place me in a positive position. These are external motivations. I want you to understand that God moves in both motivations. Mm -hmm. God has placed in you intrinsic value. You may not understand why you move and do what you do, but God says you are morally and ethically created. The Bible says you were formed in the image of God and in his likeness. His character is in you. His morals are in you. His ethics are in you. Intrinsic. Externally, God is saying, yes, there are factors in our lives that might be causing us to move in a specific direction. Pandemic, job, bank account, family. All these things are external motivations. And God is saying, if you would allow the plan that I have for you, I will manifest in your life the verse that says, for all things, mm -hmm. thank you, Jesus, all things work together for your good. And so what God is saying, what I have placed in you mm -hmm. is giving you the power to deal what's happening outside of you. 
And so what is motivating you internally, let it work. So it will change your external factors. And God is saying all things. I've heard it said, what does all mean? All means all. And God says all things will work together for the good. God, it don't feel good. God says, don't worry about the dust. Put the spirit on it. But God, my bank account is low. God says, don't be annoyed by the dust. Put the spirit on it. God says, just allow the spirit to motivate you. Thank you Jesus. God, my family is not moving like I want them to move. God says, don't be annoyed by the dust. Thank you, Jesus. Put some water on it. God, my job isn't moving like I want it to move. I want more. God says, don't be annoyed by the dust. Put some water on it. All things work together. All things work together for the good. We have value in God because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God is marvelous in how he created us. And he knows us. And when we are relative, we are in relationship, your soul will know this quite well. Rest assured that the word of God is true. And you need to understand that God knows us. God has not forgotten us. Amen. Amen. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And in God, we have value. Can anything separate us from the love of God. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble? No. Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we have calamity? No. Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we're persecuted? No. Does it mean that if we go hungry or we're destitute or we're in danger or we're threatened, does it mean that he doesn't love us? The answer is no. For your sakes, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, God does not stop loving us. Despite all these things, we shall have overwhelming victory. I decree it in not only my life, but in your life overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. You have to be convinced that nothing will separate you from the love of God. Amen. God is revealing his love through his son, Jesus Christ. Know that we have value in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I pray this word was planted in you to know don't let life's disasters, don't let the world's course annoy you. Don't be annoyed by the dust. Put some water on it. And I guarantee you, you'll find what God has placed in you. We need to stir up the gift that God has placed in us. Amen, amen. And sometimes stirring up that gift is going to cause some dust in my life. Sometimes stirring up that gift is going to cause some discomfort. Sometimes I need to pray more. Sometimes I need to worship more. Sometimes I need to study more. Those things are going to stir up some dust. But God says, keep sweeping. Don't be annoyed by the dust. Put some water on it. And the water is the spirit of God. And let the spirit calm the dust. In Jesus' name, God bless you.
Y'all have a blessed evening. Hallelujah for the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stir up Hallelujah. the gift that is in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even when you're dealing with trials and circumstances yeah, yeah. and difficulties, you, we know that the trying of our faith worketh patience. Thank you, and Jesus. patience experience and experience hope. Hallelujah. Hope in our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just know that he's seeking, Thank he's you, searching, He's calling you on today, hallelujah, to be in relationship with him. I would ask that if you don't know Jesus, that you would bow your heads and pray with me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. God, I repent of the wrong. I ask that you cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, I long I long to be in relationship, to be in relationship with, you. with you. Lord, cleanse me, Lord, cleanse me and accept me in your fold. And accept me in, in, your Jesus fold. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to thank you for praying with me. If that's the first time that you've said those words, God bless you. But there's more than just a prayer to pray. God longs to enter into your heart. God longs to grab hold of your life. God longs to fill you with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, in order to keep you in these trying times, in order to equip you to be able to minister to others, to draw them to God. So I would encourage you to pray and ask God to fill you with his precious spirit. I would also encourage you to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. My Amen. husband was talking about the blood of Jesus and how the blood of Jesus cleanses us. So I encourage you to be baptized in Jesus' name. If you don't have a church home, Soundward Worship Center would love to have you. We're in an online environment, so there's no hold barred, right, to keep you from being able to join the ministry. Hallelujah. So we would ask that you would consider Soundward Worship Center as your church home. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can email us, info at soundwordworshipcenter.com. We're online, www.soundwordworshipcenter.com, or you can reach us on Facebook. Um, thank you for all of you that have been supporting us since we started this ministry in March. Thank you all for those of you who have been supporting financially. So if you would like to give to Soundword Worship Center on our website, we have a green button. It's the GiveLify giving platform. You just press that button and the donation comes directly to the ministry. I want to thank everyone that has donated to us since we've started. God has been blessing Soundward Worship Center. And we're looking forward to getting back into the sanctuary to operate in all that God has for us to do. And with that, I will close out with prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this word that we've received on today. God, we thank you for your blessing and the services. We thank you for your anointing and your power. I pray that you would watch over us as we return, Lord God, to our, our the various places in our lives. I pray that you would keep us in your care on this week. In Jesus' name, amen.